Adrian, the, the mail's here. The mail? Yes! It's the mail that never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. And when it comes, I want to wail. Mail! Let's go get the mail. Check it out. Yep. Brian Dadu. I'm going to open this one up first. Let's see what Brian has to say. All right. Let's see. Oh, wow. He wrote a long letter. He always does that. He's such a heartfelt, thoughtful guy. Look at that. Adrian, congratulations on your humanitarian award. It couldn't have been given to a more worthy recipient. Thanks ever so much for your call last week. I made notes of this conversation as I didn't want to forget any of the amazing story I've been pondering it ever since. I'm so very, very happy for both you and your beautiful wife and the amazing family you two are building. The events that took place will impact generations of your family as well as those you both touch with your kindness, faithfulness, generosity, and willingness to help and improve other lives. Having seen so many of these types of videos, I recognize the pattern of inherent in each one and how to tell a compelling internet story. Yours was different. Your authentic, honest, unvarnished self came through and described how you channeled all your woundedness into creating an amazing business and your amazing family. The cycle stopped with you and you were on, on a mission to help others see the efficacy of what course of that course of action. Instead of channeling anger, more violence, more abuse, you've chosen to rewrite your story. So this letter is a perfect example of why direct mail and mailing people is so important. This is the only client in 15 years that I've had that was actually sent and taken the time to not just write the letter. You know, he wrote, wrote it on a, on a Word document or whatever, but he took the time to write it out, print it up, put it in the mail, put, it in, put a stamp on it. He took the time and invested that into our relationship. But direct mail has an incredible power to build real relationships. This is a lifelong friend. From simply watching a video that he saw on another training to now becoming a close friend of mine, he's offered me to stay down in his place. He has uh, some vacation stuff going on. So these relationships can be formed through sending mail and it really makes people feel more connected to each other. So I just want to encourage you to take advantage of direct mail marketing for that specific reason alone. Mark my words, I'm serious here. Direct mail and direct mail marketing is going to be bigger than it's ever been before, ever in history. But it's gonna be used differently than it's ever been used in history because there's a lot more mediums. And so today I'm gonna to talk about that because there are millions of young people in this world that love mail and there's a lot of myths out there. So I wanna talk about that today and we're gonna jump in to direct mail marketing. So you may have heard that direct mail marketing is dead that people don't care about physical mail anymore, but that's not true. It's not true at all. And I have the numbers and the facts that are gonna back that up today that I wanna share with you guys. This is gonna be a fun one because direct mail marketing is something I know a lot about and I can share that with you to help you guys with your businesses and even your life. So let me just read off some facts for you. A 2020 USPS customer and market survey, I actually did the research and found this, shows that respondents can find a more meaningful connection to those, to those that they send mail to while some indicate the importance and flexibility in how they shop for mail products. There is, they are inundated with technology and over 80% in this survey by USPS said that receiving a handwritten letter, note, or greeting card in the mail still has a lot of value for them. Mail is personal. It's a really big relationship building tool, just like you saw with Brian Dadu. Customers have a feeling that increases uh, of familiarity and connection and especially in the times that we're living in right now with the pandemic and people being locked down for so long, we're just kind of getting back to things. People have felt very lonely and distant and mail is a great way to bring that connection back. And I think that there's just a huge importance for them. There's actually some serious excitement around these young people getting to check their mailbox for letters, mails, gifts, all the different things that are sent in the mail. People are really excited about that, especially with packages and things like Amazon, USPS has increased. so. This is really important for you to understand that there is excitement and anticipation around the mailbox. A lot of us have actually transitioned with our regular bills to paperless billing. So there's not as many letters and envelopes that are going through the mail like there used to be. So really your mailbox is not as cluttered as it used to be with all the letters that you're getting. And people used to dread the mail. I know I did too. And every once in a while, when I know there's gonna be a bunch of bills like showing up at the first of the month, I'm like, oh great, the mail, right? Not as excited about it. But throughout the month, I get letters from friends and wedding invitations and birth, 
uh, baby shower invitation. So the mail is starting to become something that's a little more personal to me. So getting into somebody's mailbox, you're coming to their home, there's just a different element to it. So I wanna read you just a couple more stats because this is really gonna send it home. Standard direct mail open rates can nearly reach 90% as compared to MailChimp, which reported 23%. The open rate is how many people actually open the mail. 62% of the consumers who responded to direct mail in the past three months have actually made a purchase. That's another big statistic you gotta understand. Direct mail spend has reached a whopping $38.5 billion in local advertising spend. Incredible, that's a huge number. Almost $40 billion have been generated through direct mail. So I got a quick question for you. How often do you actually send direct mail to your clients, to your friends, to your family, or the person that uses the mailbox? I think a lot of millennials, it's been assumed that they don't know how to send mail or even write a letter or put a stamp on an envelope, but it's not true. Millions and millions of people are using direct mail. I'd love to hear how you're using it in your life and in your business. So drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so the next piece to all this is understanding the different types of direct mail. There are actually seven different types of direct mail. And today I'm gonna to go over those with you so you can understand the different ways that you can do direct mail and how you can benefit your business and life. with it. So the first one is gifts. You can send treats, promotional items like flashlights and keychains and even gift cards to people. I've sent Starbucks gift cards. I had a guy that actually sent me a gift, which was really cool. Uh, he was for an energy company and he sent me a $2 bill. Who sends a $2 bill? Super memorable and actually made me stand out. I remember it to this day and I'm even using it in this video. So you can tell right there alone that sending a $2 bill with a handwritten card is super powerful. So sending gifts is a really good way to get somebody's attention and start to build that rapport. The second type of direct mail is actually letters, either handwritten letters or typed up letters. You saw earlier that I was reading Brian to do sent me a typed up letter, but it still is very meaningful to me. It took the time to sit down, write that, type it out, print it, do all that. So handwritten letters are very, very personal, especially when you're writing, you're taking the time to write by hand. I don't think as many people do that anymore. Computers are so much easier to edit and change. If you make a mistake, you don't have to use an eraser, right? So I think typed up letters are fine. If you really want to get personal and send a special, something really, really special, you can do a handwritten letter. But a letter is a really good direct mail piece. It really communicates a story, allows you to kind of build that relationship and really share a lot on just a couple pieces of paper of somebody's heart or their passions or their dreams or what you took from the conversation that you met. If you were to actually take and write a letter after every single meeting you did as a business owner and send that to them in the mail, Imagine how meaningful, hey, I really just wanted to tell you how much I appreciated our time the other day together. I would really love to continue the conversation. So, you know, hope you have a great day. Thanks for meeting me. Whatever you're gonna say in the letter, this is a really good opportunity to build that relationship using letters in direct mail, handwritten or typed. The third type of direct mail are notices. You've probably seen these, a lot of utility companies send these, uh, power companies, things like that. These are the little tear off little notes. So you can send like somebody an update of their bill or uh, some sort of a notice. If you want to make something look official, tear offs are really powerful. We use them in the mortgage industry. It's basically like kind of like a little postcard, but you tear off the sides and then it opens up. Uh, these are something that you can use in your business. They're made out of paper. Sometimes they have one tear off at the top. You can kind of see them for the political stuff, uh, but sometimes they have them all the way around. It's just basically they do the, the little marks on the side. I'm forgetting that print terminology off the top of my head right now the scoring, there we go. So they score around the edges and then they actually have to tear it off. It just feels more official and the chances of somebody opening it up is really, really high. I don't have any data for you, but I know for a fact that the open rates on the tear offs are very, very high. All right, so number four is envelopes. Envelopes are awesome. I've sent out quite a few and we're starting to do more and more of these in my business. This is a really big one for my business. You can send what's called lumpy mail. One of my favorite books ever, I talk about it all the time, is The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. It's a masterpiece. And in that book, he talks about sending lumpy mail. A lot of growth hackers talk about sending lumpy mail. What that means is you take the gifts, the letters, and everything that you wanna send this person, you send it all in one fixed rate, flat rate ship envelope. USPS makes them, you can stuff anything in there. Whatever you can stuff, you pay the one flat rate fee, which is great and you can put multiple things in there, maybe a greeting card, maybe a gift card, and maybe some sort of other little promotional item that they can keep. Using these envelopes helps you stand out in the mailbox. Imagine if you're getting a bunch of letters in the mail and then you get this big fat flat shipping rate envelope that's stuffed with something inside of it. You're for sure gonna open that and you're gonna be curious. And then when you open it up, if it actually has something good inside of it, 
that's going to leave an impression. It's going to strike up an emotion. So there's a lot of emotion connected to direct mail that I really like. And that's why I really wanted to make this video to kind of share that piece of it as well. The fifth type of direct mail is postcards. Now in my life and in my business, working with home services companies, the general rule for me has been the bigger, the better, the bigger, the postcard, the more of an impression that it leaves, it sticks out from everybody else's. A lot of people in the direct mail space like to go cheap. So they do a little cheap four by six or four by five little tiny postcard doing at least a five by 10 or five by eight or something just a little bit bigger and oversized postcard is really going to help you stand out in the mailbox. And especially if you're just doing a two sided flyer, not some sort of folded brochure or something like that. So this is a really good one that I want you to try to apply for just sending out kind of regular routine deals or offers, especially if it's something seasonal that you have sending out a postcard to your customers can make a lot of money. I've seen home improvement companies generate hundreds of thousands of dollars off of sending out postcards in the mail for service tune-ups for all different types of the situations. And so a direct mail postcard is really cheap. I think the postage rate can get as low as about 20 cents and can run up as high as probably about what the flat rate is like 50 cents or something like that. So you can really ship out postcards for cheap. You do a bulk mail rate. Uh, and I've sent out probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of postcards in my time. So it's a really effective way to get the message out about your business. And you can send those to residences and you can send them to businesses. You'll just have to buy those lists, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. So let's jump over to number six now. So the sixth type of direct mail marketing is catalogs and magazines. You probably get catalogs and magazines if you're for part of any association or part of any kind of business journal or maybe your local newspaper. Sending publications through the mail is really powerful because it does a couple different things. The first one is it makes you the content authority in your space. So if you were to send out a logo design magazine or some sort of industry related magazine, web design magazine, you put out your own magazine and feature different stories, different technologies, different products that are coming out that positions you as authority and it gives you another revenue stream. One to feature your clients that you possibly want to feature in your magazine and it can generate revenue that way. But two, you can actually make money off of the clients that you sell advertising to inside of that magazine. So whether you have a four page, five page catalog type of booklet or a thicker actual magazine, my wife subscribes to a bunch of different ones because she's part of some different trade associations for elderberry syrup. So Frontier Co-op and Uline, these people send out these huge thick magazines and catalogs of all their products. That company has built their business off of those catalogs. Things are moving more online, but now they're continuing to send out these catalogs on a monthly basis still, and they have a strong foothold in the space because they keep top of mind every single month. The direct mail is very good for that top of mind awareness. So the seventh and last one is video brochures. Video brochures, what the heck is a video brochure? You probably haven't heard of this yet. Most people haven't, but video brochures are a hot up and coming thing that people are using now to market their businesses. Basically it's a cardstock brochure that inside has a flap that they fold over its three panels and they fold it on top, then they glue it. And it actually has a little screen that's powered by probably just a small little battery and you can actually play a video. So you get this nice cover, almost looks kind of like a small little binder and this nice cover on it. You can custom design the whole thing on the outside, whatever you want it to look like, classy, corporate, professional, edgy, however you want that to look, this video brochure. And then you open it up, you probably have to put it in like a flat rate envelope or something like that. You open it up and usually on the right hand side, there's a little screen and that's a small screen. It's like probably a three inch screen. Sometimes they get a little bit bigger, but you actually can play a video and you can put all your messaging on the inside of that front panel. And you literally have a video that plays inside of this print brochure that you can send in the mail. Hey, wanted to thank you so much for taking the time. You could probably do a more generic video to educate people on your products. Or if you've met with somebody specifically, you could record a video like this, put it on that little video brochure and send it out. So there's a lot of really cool things that are coming out, technologies, things that I don't even have time to talk about today, but video brochures are the seventh one that I wanted to share because I wanted to kind of step outside the box and do something a little bit different than everybody else does. So hopefully that helps you guys there. So if you're finding this content helpful, you could do me a huge favor, just hit that like button, introduce yourself. I really want to get to know you. This channel is really personal to me, put a lot of time and energy and we're coming up to a couple of years now on the channel. November is two years. So I really want to take the time to get to know you you've been following, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now. This is a great chance because I'm going to keep sharing content like this and we have a whole series of stuff coming your way. Direct mail offers a ton of benefits similar to like getting good response rates. Like I talked about, it's 
trust building. You can do a lot of personalization. It's very versatile. So there's different types of direct mail marketing that you can do. Uh, the simplicity, the cost effectiveness of it, it is really affordable to do. If you're doing it on a large scale, it can get expensive, but just if you're doing things on a small scale, quality versus quantity, you can really get a lot of bang for your buck with direct mail, even more than digital marketing sometimes. But there are three things that you need to know that I'm gonna share with you right now that are gonna help you have success with your direct mail marketing campaigns. So the first thing I want you to do if you're gonna run a direct mail marketing campaign is you need to buy a targeted list. You can get very specific. There's companies called List Giant. There's a bunch of different vendors out there. That's not what this video is about. I'm not trying to rep any specific company where you can buy a list, do your own research, find your own list. Maybe I'll make a video on that where you can buy a direct mail marketing list, but you wanna buy a list that is targeted, specific areas, incomes, age, kids in the home, things like that. You can go after all that different information. There's a lot of information and targeting when it comes to direct mail. So I really want you to be able to have that opportunity. Now, the second thing is being able to set up your tracking proper, properly. Your tracking of these campaigns is super important. Using tracking numbers, QR codes, text, certain codes, numbers. Like if you have a number that they can text, this is super, super effective to be able to track your campaigns because measuring the ROI of these campaigns is what's going to help you determine what works and what doesn't work. Because there's seven different, seven different types of direct mail marketing campaigns that we talked about, and you may want to try each one of those and see what works. Or you may know what's going to work for your audience already, which is my hope. So you're not wasting a bunch of money just trying different things. And that's the big thing is being able to track it and see what type of ROI you're getting from it. The third piece to making your direct mail marketing campaign successful is actually delivering valuable content. If your content isn't valuable, if it's just a salesy piece or self-promotion piece, they're going to throw it right in the trash. And the next time they get one, they're going to throw it right. You have one chance to make a first impression. So do something big, start with a bang and continue that momentum throughout the relationship because it is a relationship. I started working in the direct mail industry in 2006 during the downturn, just a year before I actually started my printing. There is without a doubt a massive opportunity for designers to use their creative gifts to make a ton of money in the direct mail marketing industry. My first marketing mentor back in 2007 taught me a really, really important lesson that I wanted to share with you guys. Never sell a direct mail marketing design project as that, as just a design project. It is a marketing campaign from the messaging to where it's going to be sent to. The whole entire campaign as a whole can actually be sold and it can generate millions of dollars for your client. So selling a graphic design project as a direct mail marketing campaign for a couple hundred bucks, when you can sell a marketing campaign for thousands of dollars, that's going to make millions, is way more valuable to you. So this is really important to know about direct mail marketing as a designer and how you can leverage it and make money within your own business. Don't sell the project, sell the campaign. So that's why I wanted to talk to you guys today about direct mail. I know this was probably gonna be a lot of information, but it's super helpful. Hopefully you took some notes. And if you didn't, maybe watch the video again and definitely hit that like button. Let me know if you got value out of this. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is if you are a graphic designer, web designer, or motion designer in the space, we have a free Facebook community. It's a private community of some of the greatest graphic designers, greatest entrepreneurs, and we're all building a community together. It's called the Instagraphics Pro Network. There's almost 400 of us now. I would love to have you a part of our tribe, a part of our community, but you have to answer all the questions when you go to join, or I won't let you in. We're very picky. We want quality people, not just quantity. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.